today, the Feast of the Holy Family continues on through the Feast of the Three Kings and ends on the Baptism of Christ. And if you bring down the trees before that, you're all going to be excommunicated. <laughs> but we now light the Christmas candle as a reminder that the Christ, the light of the world, continues to grow in each one of our families. Because of Christ, the, lit, the light of the candle is now lit. As a reminder, the light of Christ dwells in your family, in your heart. So if we're looking for the feast of the Holy Family, we have to look at you, who are, the, all of you, who are the Holy Family. So we begin, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. As we begin this celebration, we pause and ask God for his forgiveness. And thanksgiving for choosing us, our family, as your holy family, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Thanksgiving be choosing our family, for you are the light of Christ, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Thanksgiving for choosing our family as your holy family with your signs of love, faith, and hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us to give us our sins and bring us to a lasting life. Amen. Amen. Father will not be forgotten. 
firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord.
must be on your mind, ever on your lips, and always in your heart. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Praise when the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod. Now what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod had died, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. He rose, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Achilleus was ruling over Judea, in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go back there. And because he had been warned in another dream, he departed for the reach of Galilee. He went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called on Nazarene, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise One day I was teaching in, kinding, in kindergarten, that's the level that I could enter and be accepted, the kindergarten level, and uh, I asked the children to draw a picture of their own family. We had about 25 uh, children in the family, in the class rather, so they all drew a picture of the family. One child drew a picture of mommy and daddy and the child. There was one child in that family. Another drew a picture of two mommies with three little children. Someone else took a picture of the two uh, men and a couple children in that family. Someone else took a picture of uh, three days with mommy and four days with daddy. Then another threw, threw a picture of a battered uh, mother in a shelter. And that's what his idea of a family together. Another picture, a person drew a picture of daddy in one house, mommy in another house, a sign of a divorce. Another picture, a picture of a man and woman with a child, but it was, there was no marriage. And that was his idea of family life. We had 25 kids, and we probably could get 18 different ideas of what a family life is in the United States today. But what we can say is that in every family that they portrayed, we could call each family a holy family. In my mind, there is no dysfunctional family. There are human families. And to agree that Christ is at the center of that family, to that degree, that child, that family, is a holy family. And the center of every family, I'll take you out to dinner, if you can tell me, what is the one element that all of you, all of you together, if it's a single person, a single family, what is the one element that all of you have that makes your family a holy family? Prayer. Love, nice try. Christ in ours. Christ in ours, nice try. Cross. Every one of you has a cross. It may be a cross of health, it may be a cross of unemployment, it may be a cross of divorce, it may be a cross of mental sickness, it may be a cross of a strain in your family over Christmas, but there's nobody here that doesn't have a cross. And at the center of that cross is present, Christ is present. Because Christ is present at every cross, and there is no cross that is not Christ's cross. So I can honestly say, no matter how you say my family is dysfunctional, it's natural. And it's natural, but it's also holy because of the presence of Christ. And a sign of your holiness are some of the characteristics of a holy family. We saw that in St. Paul. St. Paul says, he mentions compassion. There's compassion in your family. There's kindness in your family. There's a sense of humility in your family. There's, there also is a sense of gentleness. There's patience. There's also bearing with one another. A 
of forgiving one another. We have that sandwich family where the wife and the husband are here, but now they become the parents of the elderly, and they also are the parents of the grandchildren. And we see that sandwich family with a tremendous amount of kindness, gentleness, and patience, all indications that the Holy Family is present there. Sometimes people think of families, and they think, well, they have their own idea of what the ideal family is. Well, look at St. Uh, Joseph and Mary. They were a dysfunctional family. They had to take off from uh, Bethlehem, go to Egypt. Immigrants, they didn't know where they were going. How many people that we know that came from Vietnam and didn't know where they were going? And they were an image of the Holy Family who ended up in a camp, and they ended up in a camp in Egypt. Yes, when we look at families today, we see a reflection of, of the Holy Family. Uh, they are being attacked by a herd, right? so they left the town in Bethlehem. They went to, how many people have been, been attacked in one way or the other, even at this mass today? And then what happened, he wanted to go back, but Achilles was the king there, and he was afraid that if he went back to <coughs> Judea, his family would be killed. And how many people are afraid to go back home? Uh, a woman that may be in a shelter because of a husband that uh, not only abandoned her, but terrorizes her. And I can give you story after story of a Joseph and Mary today in families that are being terrorized within and without. Yes, when we look at the Holy Family, we don't have to look very far. Jesus wants to be invited to every family. So he, he wants to be the source of your security. Someone said, I can't live without you. And Jesus meant that I can't live without you. And he says, I can't care without you, and I can't love without you. Because that's where he shows his kindness, his gentleness, his forgiveness, his bearing with each other through each one of you. And every time you act like Christ, you are an indication of the Holy Family. Yes, you are the source of my compassion, my kindness, my gentleness. Yes, these are signs of the presence of Christ at the center of your family. No matter what picture you, 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 part of, you paint of your family, Jesus is at the center, and that makes you the Holy Family. Now, as Jesus welcomed as an honored guest in your family, you, you, a good indication that he's a welcomed guest if you imitate the behavior of Christ in your family. We call that the law of attraction. That once we realize Christ's presence within me, I reach out and recognize Christ's presence in you, especially in the suffering that you may be going through now or went through now. Yes, there is a law of attraction for the negative and the positive. Uh, I hear confessions of kids. Unfortunately, they don't like me hearing their confessions very often because they're not in church. And I try to grab them a couple of times a year at CCD. But I ask them uh, these following questions. Is there anybody in your life you need to forgive? You manage your mother, your father, your brother, your classmate. Is there anybody you need to say you're sorry to that you hurt? Then the third question is, how do you love God? Most of the times they don't go to Mass. And they, they kind of disregard the third commandment. It's not their fault. Their parents aren't there. And then I said, how do you love your neighbor? Did you bully anybody? Did you uh, hurt anybody? Were you kind? Were you generous? Did you ever give up in the collection on Sunday? I never see it. The generosity isn't there. But the one that I ask uh, most of all is, have you cheated? That's the preventing uh, tsunami in school. Cheating. I always ask about cheating. And more often than not, they do uh, cheat. And it becomes part of their life. They cheat in grammar school, they cheat in grammar junior high school, they cheat in high school. They cheat in college, oftentimes they cheat in marriage, in marriage, because it's a law of attraction to the negative. But today we're not talking about that. That's realistic. I think we all have to face that. Our kids are not angels in the midst of a holy family. But then you have the other law of attraction, that the apple doesn't fall far from a tree. I'll give you an example. A couple of days, weeks ago, there was a little girl kneeling in front of the, the first pew, where uh, Dorothy is right now. 
and she was so small that her head could not go over the top of the pew. And she had her head right against the pew. And she was praying her head off, head off before Mary in the blessed with Mary's statue there. And she was praying to Mary and she was praying to Jesus. And she was really in, in a contemplative mood because she, she didn't move. She was so engrossed in prayer. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. You have to look at the mommy and daddy who are at, at, this, at church all the time. Yes, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The law of attraction. If you people recognize Christ in you, your kindness, your generosity, your thoughtfulness, it says for your forgiveness, that catches on and that brings out in the law of attraction the same qualities that are planted in each one of us. So when we talk about the uh, Holy Family, I don't have to look very far. All I have to do is look at you. Because my proof is the cross that you're carrying right now. And we should conclude in a very religious song. I, I, had, I hired a choir to come. And with the choir who has my paper, please stand. With the choir that has, please stand. Start with the bridge first, though. <laughs> the lyrics aren't there, but you know it. Son of the living God, and thank you. Our response is, Heavenly Father, help our family be like your holy family. Holy Father, help our family be like your holy family. <coughs> that the family of the church will be strengthened and renewed through the grace of Christ's body and blood, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, help our family be like your holy family. For those charged with protecting society, that they will build a word in which family live, life is revered, 
protected and promoted. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, help our family be like your holy family. For the universal respect of all human persons, that the culture of life will transform every human society and every human heart. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, help our family be like your holy family. For blessings on all families, that the love, the unity, the self-donation, and the tenderness of the Holy Family will overflow to all families and make them truly happy. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, help our family be like the Holy Family. For families that struggle because of addiction, <clears throat> mental illness, chronic sickness, or ongoing trials of any kind, that they will be fortified and blessed with God's special life, favor, and peace. We pray to the Lord. And we feel help our family be like your holy family. For those who are isolated or lonely, that they will be consoled by the friendship of Jesus who strengthened us with his love. We pray to the Lord. And we feel help our family be like your holy family. For family members who are alienated or estranged, that the unfailing power of the mercy of Jesus will reunite and reconciled loved ones to begin their family life anew. We pray to the Lord. And we pray how our family be the holy family. For the prayers we offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. And we pray how our family be like your family. For those gifts that you ask me to give at Christmas time during these days of Christmas. The following gifts I will give you. Prayers for my cousin Janice having surgery tomorrow. Please pray for me to keep the willpower so that I will lose weight, control my diabetes and hypertension. Pray for me to be ordained a deacon in the Catholic Church. Father, I have to keep doing what you're doing. Please pray for someone I care about that will come back to the church and been away from the church for a long time. Please help my husband leave the house so the divorce can be our final and peace for the girls. We pray to the Lord. For the end of the divorce so daddy will leave the house. Please pray for me when you can. Pray, please pray for Ashley, Gabriel, Ashley and Gabriella who are now at Ukraine visiting so they will return and not want to stay in the orphanage where they're adopted from. Pray right, that I'll be his spiritual uh, advisor. For my brother-in-law, Paul, who was recently diagnosed, diagnosed with lung cancer. For my husband's career uh, cancer to go into submission. That I'll be able to find a wonderful Catholic a wife to spend my life with her. We pray through the Lord. Heavenly Father, help our family be here, holy family. One perfect star to touch the night with warmth and promise shining bright. One perfect light to reach the earth and show mankind that Christ child birth. One perfect love to lead the way to peace and hope for us today. One perfect sign for us to all to see our Savior for eternity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Operatory Hymn is number 94 in the hymnal, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Thank our brothers and sisters for our sacrifice. May we accept the hope of God the Father Almighty. Lord, accept this sacrifice and through the prayers of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, and of her husband Joseph, unite our families in peace and love. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks for Jesus Christ our Lord. And the wonder of the Incarnation, your eternal word, has brought to the eyes of faith a new and radiant vision of your glory. In him we see our God made visible. And so are caught up in the love of God we cannot see. And so of all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Accept them as once you accepted the gifts of your servant Abel. 
the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the bread and wine offered by your priest Melchizedek. Almighty God, we pray that your angel may take this sacrifice to your altar. Then as we receive from this altar the sacred body and blood of your Son, let us be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember Lord, those who have died and gone before us, marked with this fire of faith. Especially those for whom we not pray, especially for Grandpa Arsini. May he who all sleep with Christ find your presence, light, happiness, and peace. For ourselves, do we ask and share in the fellowship of your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Though we are sinners, we trust in your mercy and your love. Do not consider what we truly deserve, but grant us your forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Through him you give us all these gifts. You fill them with life and goodness, you bless them and make them holy. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
communion hymn is number 83 in the hymnal, Away in a Manger. Oh. 
in your life. To you, my husband, wife, my son, my in-law, my outlaw, whoever it might be, my gift to you is what you ask of me, signed by you. A open check. Who has given the green card to anybody in your life? No one. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Lord, you care for your people even when they stray from being generous with a green card. Grant us a complete change of heart so we will use that green card. So that we may follow you with greater fidelity through that green card. Grant this through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless all of you, heartless people, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas. Our recessional hymn is number 81 in the hymn.